Hello everyone, welcome to Vigyan Bharat. In this video today, I'm going to give a complete proof of the rank nullity theorem, which was given as a problem yesterday. So let's quickly first discuss the statement of the rank nullity theorem, along with some prerequisites that we require to complete the proof of this theorem. So this is the statement that given any vector space V, which is finite dimensional, then the dimension of the vector space V equals to the dimension of the null space of T plus dimension of the range space of T. So this was the statement of the rank nullity theorem. This is a thought which you can pause the video and read yourself. Let's move ahead into the proof. This theorem is based on linear maps and these are the four notions which we require in order to prove this theorem. The first is what is a linear transformation which we should know. The second notion which we should know is what we mean by a finite dimensional vector space. The third is null space and range space of any given linear map T from a vector space V to vector space W and finally it is a result that we're going to use while proving the theorem. Okay. So before proving the theorem, let me just quickly briefly note down these notions for you. If someone don't know, then, then you can quickly revise what you mean by them. First comes a linear map. As the name itself suggests the term linear. So a map T from a vector space V to W, let me denote by that map by T, then T from V to W, where V and W are vector spaces over a given field F, then such a map T is said to be linear if it satisfies these two properties. The first property is known as additivity, that is, it preserves addition of vectors coming from the vector space V. That is, if I take any two vectors u and w, u comma w from the vector space V, then it is, and apply t on them, then it is same as first I apply t to u and then add the result when I apply t to w. Then this should hold for every u comma w, these vectors coming from the vector space V. This is the first property This that T should satisfy. The second property is also known as homogeneity. Homogeneity. That is, if I scale a vector, suppose say V, and apply T on it, then it is same as apply T to the vector V and then scale by that scalar lambda. If this holds for every scalar alpha coming from the field F and for every vector V coming from the vector space V, then T satisfies homogeneity. And if any such map which satisfies both one and two, then such a map T is said to be linear. Is said to be a linear map. Linear map. Just a quick observation which you can make from here. If you choose your lambda to be zero, then, or if you just take u to be zero and w to be the zero vector, then you can prove yourself. Then the linear map T maps zero to zero. That is, it maps the zero vector, let me denote by subscript V to uh, emphasize that this zero is a vector of the vector space V, then it maps it to the zero vector of the vector space W. Okay, so this is just a quick remark. Let's move ahead now to the second notion. Let's try to understand this one, what we mean by a finite dimensional vector space. Throughout our course or upcoming problems, 
we assume a standard convention that my v capital v denotes a vector space vector space okay so now what i mean by this term f d v s which i which wh what i mean by that finite finite dimensional dimensional vector space finite dimensional vector space okay so a vector space v is called finite dimensional if some list of vectors in it spans the whole space let me write it quickly v is said to be finite dimensional if if there exists some list if some list of vectors if some list of vectors in v spans v spans me if i choose uh, and of course uh, just a quick observation that this list have when i am saying list it means that it the length is finite so what i mean by that that uh, if there exists some vector suppose say v1 v2 till vm or vm then these vectors can span the whole space if i take the span of them then it equals v if such a list of vectors exist then in that case this v is called finite dimensional finite dimensional i will discuss what i mean by this later on okay so this was the second notion now these two are very important null space and range space null space and range space so first let's discuss what we mean by null space null space in sometimes it's also denoted by n of t so let me first define it if if there is a map t which is an element of this space it simply means that t is a linear map from the vector space v to vector space w it means only this one of course this t is linear that it satisfy those two properties which are defined above then the null space of t is the collection of all those vectors in inside v which are mapped to the zero vector of w let me just quickly write it null space of t is the collection of those small v's coming from the vector space capital v such that this is such that we can like vertical this bar t maps those to the zero vector in w so you collect all those v and uh, take uh, that collection then such a such a collection which is again you observe that this is indeed a subset of the vector space v then this is called the null space of t it is some in some text it is also uh, written as kernel of t you can also there is alternate either you can write null space in short or kernel space of t both are equivalent okay so this was null space of t now i gave you an example on this suppose if my t is the zero map from v to w what i mean by that that it maps every vector v to the zero vector of w if i take this map this is the zero map try to distinguish here i am defining a map which is nothing but the zero map which maps everywhere every vector of v to the zero element of w for every v, v then if i ask you now find the find the null space of t find the null space of t then try to find it pause the video try to think it yourself and answer me in the comment section 
let's move ahead to the second notion this one range space we understood what it mean by null space now let's discuss range space range space from our earlier classes we know what it mean by range for a given map range basically is a collection of all those elements which are mapped by t on into the co domain in general i'm saying so in in context of vector spaces range space is nothing for a map t again for a linear map t from vector space v to vector space w range of t try to listen it uh, carefully range of t is a subset of w and is a collection of all those vectors of the form tv which are mapped by t when i apply when i act when t is acting on v so collection of all those vectors uh, which are which which belongs to w so if you collect all those vectors for every v in v then such collection is nothing but the range space of t let me denote it range space of t is the collection of all those vectors inside w such that they are coming uh, for some v in v this v is coming from the vector space v basically collection of all images you can understand it like that also so just a quick here was a uh, here is a quick remark i did it by star that this range space is a subspace of w is a subspace of the vector space w that it satisfy uh, all the properties uh, for a subspace it will satisfy if you collect any two vectors and take the sum then again it will going to lie in w if you scale it by a vector then again it will preserve the scalar multiplication zero should be there so you can verify it and just a quick remark over here also that this kernel t is a subspace of v is a subspace of v you can easily again verify this one also okay let's move ahead now before going further into the proof let me just quickly write down just one important result which you're going to use this fourth point this one this will be very important this will be we're going to use when uh, shortly when we'll be uh, proceeding with the proof of the rank linearity theorem so what's the result is let me just change the ink yeah so the result is that linearly independent list linearly independent list of vectors can be extended to a basis list of vectors can be extended to a basis for the vector space v so this is the result which i'm going to use i can elaborate it like that that every linearly every linearly independent list of vectors in a finite dimensional vector space can be extended to a basis of the vector space to form a basis so that you can incorporate more and more linearly independent vectors to give a list and then the resulting list will be a basis for the vector space okay so now let's move ahead now to our main result for this today's video that is the rank nullity theorem rank nullity theorem now we want to prove this let me just quickly note down a statement that suppose v is finite dimensional v is finite dimensional vector space now you understand now we understood what it mean by finite dimensional and t is a linear map element of this space that is t is nothing but a linear map from the vector space v to the vector space w then the theorem says the range of t range of t 
is finite dimensional is finite dimensional and now now let me write the main result this we want to prove this this equality dimension of v dimension of v equals dimension of the null space of t dimension of the null space of t plus dimension of its range space so we want to prove this okay so let's move ahead now to the proof of this how we're going to prove this uh, equality using all the previous knowledge which we wrote above okay so let's start the proof let i assume that i have a basis which i denoted by u1 u2 till um let this be a basis for the null space of the t be a basis for the null space of t if this is a basis then uh, by definition of basis it is linearly independent and spans the whole of null space and i can write from here the dimension that is the cardinality of this set which is m so dimension of null space dimension of null space of t which i write null of t is m okay it's quite clear there are m linearly independent vectors in this basis so dimension of null space is m now i'm going to use this result let me denote it by suppose say mm, star so using star i can extend that this list i can extend this list by adding some more vectors to a basis of v now using star the linearly independent list which i denote by li in short the linearly independent list u1 u2 till um can be extended can be extended to form to a basis to a basis which what i do in order to extend this first i wrote down the li vectors which i have now i add some more vectors to this list suppose say these n vectors v1 v2 vn then this new list formed is a basis of is a basis of the vector space v i have extended my given list to form a basis of v if this is a basis of v from let me change the color so that you can easily understand the list now this list u1 u2 um v1 v2 and vn i have extended now this is a basis is a basis of v if it's a basis then this implies again by definition of basis that dimension of the vector space v is i ask you to pause the video and answer to yourself first i hope you have given a pause and given a thought to it the dimension of the vector space v will be these m vectors plus these n vectors that is m plus n dimension of the vector space v will be m plus n because m what here the, m vectors i was having previously now i have extended added n more vectors so in total i have m plus n vectors so this is the dimension of the vector space v okay now in order to complete the proof in order to prove this one on the left hand side i have m plus n on the right hand side the null space by def by assumption i have assumed to be m 
here were these m vectors. So I have assumed that the dimension of the space is m. On the left hand side, it's m plus n. If I can prove the dimension of the range space is n, then I'm done. The proof is complete. So in order to complete the proof, I have to prove now to complete the proof. To complete the proof, what I need to do, I need to just show first uh, the dimension. I have to show that dimension of the range of T is n. This I want to show. But before proving this, first I have to prove that this range space of T is finite dimensional. Then only I can prove that it's equal to n finite dimensional. So these two things I have to prove and now they are very easy because what we have already constructed. So now they are very easy. So let's quickly prove them. In order to prove that dimension of the range space of T is n, that is I have to prove that there exist n vectors in the range space which forms a basis for the range space of T. So I can write it like that. What I want to prove will prove that there exist the range, the vectors in the range space look like this T of some V. So let me denote T of V1, T of V2 and till T of V n. So these are my n vectors where they lie in my range space. Now my task is to prove that these n vectors forms, forms a basis for the range space of T. If I'm able to prove then I'm done range space of T because then I will be having n vectors which are linear independent. Okay. So what I do now, let I pick a vector from the vector space, what I pick a vector from the vector space, because now this, let me denote this call, let me denote by capital A. So the list capital A is a basis for the vector space V. So by definition, it spans V. The list of vectors U1, U2, Um, V1, V2, Vn spans V. Because U1, U2, Um, V1, V2, Vn, V1, V2, Vn spans V being a basis. So therefore there exists, there will exist some scalars. There exist scalars, which I denote by alpha one, alpha two, alpha m, beta one, beta two, beta n from the field such that I can write my vector V as a linear combination alpha one u one plus alpha two u two plus alpha m u m plus beta one v one beta two v two plus beta n v n. I can easily now write this that is what I have expressed my v as a linear combination of these list of vectors here because they spans v so in particular they will span I can write this small v as a linear combination of them okay. Now I can apply T on both the sides. It's easy now. Applying T on both the sides. T of whole of this. Because now, since T is linear, I know that my vector that T is a linear map. So I can now try to observe this. Uh, this I can write it summation alpha i u i i running from 1 to m plus summation beta of j vj and j runs from 1 to n. Try to understand this state, uh, whatever I, what I have done basically, I have written the right hand side of this here in terms of submissions. That's all I have done. Okay. Now because t is linear, so I can again uh, write it like this. Uh, alpha one u one. Let me just open it. Otherwise, you don't get confused. Alpha m u one 
plus t of beta one v one beta two v two beta n v n. I have used the linearity of t. Okay, the left hand side is t of v. Now, because t is linear, so I can again write it like this: alpha one t of v one t of u. It's not v. Alpha two t of u two. Alpha m t of u m plus beta one. T of v one, beta two, T of v two, and finally till beta n T of v n. I hope this is clear. I have just used the linearity of T. Now try to see these vectors, these guys, T of u one, T of u two, T of v m, u m. Recall that these U one, U two, and U M were bases of the null space. That is, they were coming from where? They were elements from the null space of T. If I apply T to all of them, T of U one, you can convince yourself that T of U two, same T of U M, the or they all equal to the zero vector of the vector space W. T, that is simply the zero vector because all of them belong to the null space, so they all will vanish from here. This will be zero. This will be zero until here. This will be zero. So what I'm left now, T of v will be beta one, T of v one, beta n, T of v n. Fine. I hope this is clear to you. Now try to see something from here. T v, where this element will lie, this will belong to the range space of T, because it is the image of this vector v. Now I have expressed an element of the range space in terms of the linear combination of these m vector here will be T of v two till T of v n. For some arbitrary, this I have expressed for some arbitrary. Vector v, that is any vector coming from the vector space v, I can express them as the linear combination in terms of these n vector for of course different choice of scalars. So what I have concluded from here that this list of vectors v, t of v one, t of v two, t of v n spans range space. What I conclude from here, this implies that. These n vectors t of v one, t of v two, t of v n spans spans range of t. So what I have found a spanning set for my range space, and which is contain exactly n vectors. So from here, I have proved I have which proves one. Which proves the first point, that is, the range space of T is finite dimensional. I have proved that finite dimensional. Next, I will show that its dimension in n. But one thing we have proved, where it is, I have written it somewhere. Uh, there were two steps involved in that. Mm, wait, just a second. Yeah, here. So this for this I have proved. This was my one, and this is my two. So this I have proved that my range of t is finite dimension. Now I'm left to prove, you not know, just its range is exactly n. I have to prove this one. Okay, because now uh, I need to to prove now that range of t is n. Range of t is n that I want to prove. Dimension, not range. Dimension of the range of T is n. That is, let me write it again. Dimension of that I want to prove that there are these. That, that is, I want to show those above n vectors which were spanning 
the range space T of Vn are linearly independent. If I can show that, then my job is done. Linearly independent. Cool. So let's try to see this. In order to show this that these are linearly independent, I consider consider a linear combination C1 T of V1, C C2 T of V2, Cn T of Vn equal to zero. Let me call this equation suppose say this like that. If I am able to prove that these are scalars are zero then which it is by definition shows that the, those n vectors tv1 tv2 tvn are li so my job is to show this one okay now i use one using equation one using one and linear and linearity of t linearity of t i can rewrite equation one as t of c1 v1 The right hand side zero vector. Uh, let me let it just simply zero. I can collect all these terms like this again. I have used linearity over here. This zero, I'm not writing, but you should understand this is a zero vector in the vector space W. Okay, zero of W. Now v1 v2 vn are vectors in the space vector space v i have taken the linear combination and i am mapping this all this this again element of the vector space so i'm mapping applying when i apply t on them they are mapped to the zero vector so this implies what the elements inside belong to the null space c1 v1 c2 v2 where they lie they belong to the null space okay Null space of t. If they belong to the null space, and I know uh, from the very starting that these u1, u2 till u m being a basis of the null space spans null space, spans null space. Try to understand this last. We are at we are now at the very end of the proof because these m vectors span the null space, and this vector this whole this is a vector let me call something uh, uh, let me call some small s s equal to this vector so my, i can write s because this is in the null space and being an element of the null space i can write it as linear combination of the spanning set d1 u1 d2 u2 dm um where these d1 d2 till dm are some scalars coming from the field f when i'm saying coming from the field f field in usually we choose either r or c so in general there's a standard convention to use capital f for the field so let me replace now s my s is c1 v1 c2 v2 cn and vn and on the right hand side i have d1 d1 u1 d2 u2 dm um okay now what i do i take all the all the vectors on the right hand side to the left hand side now try to see this very carefully this will be minus d1 of u1 minus d2 of u2 and so on minus dm of um equal to the zero vector of v <coughs> okay so, so now on the left hand side i have a linear combination equal to the zero vector v but i know since i know that this list of vector u1 u2 till um v1 v2 and v n 
is a basis of V from the construction above. This implies this the above list is Li linearly independent. So from here, if this list is linearly independent, if I call this uh, double star, then from the equation, from equation double star, all my scalars should be zero. That is C1, C2 till Cn. These should also be zero and minus D1, minus D2, minus of dm equal to the zero, which implies uh, that is di is zero for every i. But my interest lies in these scalars. I I want to, I wish when I started the proof, but I said that if I'm able to show that these are zero, all the scalars are zero, then these m vectors will be linearly independent and which will imply in the range set the dimension of the range set is n because these are li so that i have proved now all my scalars are zero from here so which completes the proof which completes the proof that is dimension of the vector space v equal to the dimension of the null space of t plus dimension of the range space Try to go through this proof again, step by step. If you have any doubts anywhere, you can either drop a comment in the comment box or you can drop me a text on our telegram group whose link you can find from the about section or about section of our channel. You can go there and find its link as well as you can find the link in the description. So if you like this video, please do give a like and uh, drop a comment in the comment box uh, what more topics you want us to make if you are preparing for something and do join the telegram group it will be going to be very helpful for you and do share about our initiative among your friends it's completely free whatever we are doing for you and subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon for receiving notifications at the earliest thank you so much for watching and thank you so much